All right, welcome to Yapping Episode 3, joined by Grant Matthew as always. What's up, Grant? We didn't have anything to really talk about last week, so we didn't run an episode, but there's a lot to talk about this week. So here we are. We're up our, our our process, I guess, a little bit. We're using Twitter spaces to hopefully get people to call in about any of the topics, any other topics, any stuff like that. And uh, I've already put my opinion out there quite a bit on a lot of these things, but... Uh, yeah, we're gonna be talking about Gabriel's ban, 2025 season, and then I guess uh, a topic that was just added yesterday because of Mahone's video, the goat of Pokemon, which I'm actually curious to hear your perspective on when we get there. But uh, yeah, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah, we didn't have much last week, and uh, probably a good thing because you know the the big world's news dropped the next day, so it would have all been yapping in the truest sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know there's a lot of takes. I know a lot of people, the bigger thing is everyone wants to talk about it, right? Everyone's got an opinion. So this is an outlet. Now uh, we should have a good way for people to call in here on on the Twitter spaces. Um, so I'm excited to hear what people think. Um, I've got some some takes too that might be a little controversial. So it <laughs> should, should, should be fun. All right. Well, we can start with Gabriel's ban. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, Gabriel got... Uh, DQ'd at NAIC. Uh, of course, we didn't hear anything from TPCI's side of the story or the judges involved or anything like that. But Gabriel did make a post on his Twitter that he has since removed. And uh, that's curious to me. But actually, uh, when I did the podcast episode with Chip, we brought it up. We talked about it a little bit. And I was I felt more confused in the moment. But some people brought to light some pretty good takes on why that maybe was, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we never got... Any side of the story besides Gabriel's Gabriel made the Twitter post. And what I saw people commenting on the, the podcast episode for me and Chip was uh, it's possible the reason he got banned was because of his Twitter post. Um, not so much anything to do with the DQ at NAIC, but because of the Twitter post as far as like some kind of like unsportsmanlike conduct, which I guess I could see, but I don't remember exactly what was in the Twitter post from Gabriel and it's not there anymore. So I can't go back and actually like look at it. So I'm actually not sure if I like agree with that or disagree with that because I can't go back and see the post. Yeah, I remember the post, um, but I don't remember what it said. And I didn't think when I read it at the time, I didn't think it was anything different than you see from anyone else yeah. who gets DQ'd. So, but the idea of that possibly being an unsportsman like actually makes a lot of sense because how often do you see somebody with just a, a DQ then turn into a ban unless it's something egregious? And, you know, especially somebody who Pokemon knows well at this point and is, is respected, uh, you know, world champion, multiple IC winner. Um, his brother won a regional this year. It's like, all right, what's, uh, you know, how bad was the event that DQ'd him? So I, I, I actually think the unsportsman like might be uh, more so, and especially if he deleted the post. Yeah, and that, that would actually like line up with why he would delete the post. Because if they were just like, you're banned because of the DQ then deleting the post never makes any sense. Like, he probably still feels like that it's an unjustified ban and that he didn't cheat in the moment. And it's like, well, you're saying, I'm saying I didn't cheat. You said I did cheat. You banned me for it. Um, but the unless, like, one of the conditions for his ban being, like, shorter was, like, you have to delete that post is the only thing I can, like, think of. But even that seems like a really, like a really weird condition for Pokemon to put on a player. Um, and if that, like, got leaked, that'd be, that'd be, like, a really bad PR for them for that to be, like, what they told players to do to, like, change their ban. So I feel like that's not true. Um, which in which case the other it does make more sense that that is maybe why he got banned was because of the post. But it didn't feel like the post when I read the post, it just kind of felt like he was defending himself. And then maybe he was like his like final couple sentences at the end where he's like the only way they can stop me is by DQing <laughs> that, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> epic, epic line. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was fine. Uh, I guess like the only other maybe if something more came of it, like someone like messaging certain judges behind the scenes, like that. Of course, like if that got out of hand, that would be, of course, um, definitely uh, uncalled for and something that shouldn't happen. So that would maybe and that would tie into that as well, I guess, a little bit for sure. Yeah, it's tough to tough to say. I don't know. I mean, the, the timing of it uh, seems really, you know, weird. A three month ban that coincides ending on the first uh, SP or whatever is a regional maybe down in, in Brazil, I think. Something like that. That that day he's allowed back to play. So it's basically just punishment. You can't, you know, can't play at Worlds. Can't defend your title. Yeah, basically, right? Yeah, it's just not going to be able to. Yeah, that's basically what it is. It's just not going to be able to play at Worlds. But besides Which, that, 
which is a bad, you know, it sucks. He's already got one, so he, he can't get two right away to join the, the GOAT debate. But um, <laughs> it, it sucks also because Worlds is, uh, you know, one, financial. You win that, that's a lot of money, right? Not just the prize money. The trophy and the card can both sell for up to 100 grand, maybe more. Yeah. And, and also then you don't get your invite right away which you would get, you know, you know, you got top four, you got your invite. You didn't even have to play this season. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Get your invite right away. So, I mean, that's, a, and that's like the big, the big tournament to play for. Like, I think if you ask most players, maybe if you don't include the prize money, if you could like win everything else or win worlds, most people would want to win worlds more than even like everything else throughout a season. I mean, if you were saying everything else, like all I see is all regionals, that'd be kind of ridiculous, but like um, you'd need to stack up quite a few other wins to, to out, rank worlds especially now with the prize money at worlds that you get it's like equal to two ic so would you rather win two ic's or worlds would definitely just be worlds at that point even like three ic's or worlds uh even though i mean the yeah because i guess if you get the world's card involved as far as how much that thing is worth like probably still trying to you're still trying to win worlds over win three ic's even at that point and he was on his way wasn't he didn't he win the first two ic's yeah yeah he was going for the uh the grand slam although it would have an asterisk obviously with no ocic this year yeah so wouldn't quite be able to get all four but could have got like all three ICs in Worlds. I guess like that's like the new Grand Slam. I mean, would even yeah. I guess like is the Grand Slam now just to win all the ICs? There is one less IC, so it's only three. But Tord is the only one who ever did the four. But now do we like break? Now do we make it three? Like if you can get all three, that's the next one, right? Because just, it just adds more for the the debates going forward. You know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I don't know. We don't really know what the ban was, why the ban was made, and and. One thing that someone had said, which I think, like, in to me seems reasonable, but I want to ask you, because you are a lawyer, and I don't know what, like, if this fits under the kind of law that you'd have any, like, take on, but, like, would it make sense that TPCI wouldn't ever want to make a statement about Gabriel because he is a minor, playing in the seniors division, whatever? Is that, does that make sense? Is that, like, a thing? Like, as, would would any kind of, like, legal thing hold them back from make, making a statement on a player who's a minor? No. No, that wouldn't, that's not a thing. That's just the same thing as uh, Pokemon not streaming the first three rounds because of union laws like those that that doesn't exist. Um, I, I mean, I, it's obviously their blanket policy, which, uh, you know, if you go back to yapping episode one, you know, my policy, what I would like to see is every judge, uh, you know, every time a judge issues something that that's public. Um, for them not to have any statement on this, especially this high profile of a person, uh, minor or not, is is just so dumb. It's so stupid. And, you know, maybe I get a ban for saying that about uh, Pokemon. <laughs> so what? OK, I don't want to go to the first few regionals anyways. Um, <laughs> Give me my three months so I can yeah. say what I want. I stand in solidarity with with those who, uh, you know, and, and this goes to what you're saying, too. We always end up taking the side of, of the person who tweets about it, you know, because we only get one side of the story. Um, unless it's like, oh, I was the person playing them and they did this or whatever. Like uh, the guy who called in last time, uh, I heard stories from the other side, you know, immediately following it. So it's like yeah. if you ha if you have both both sides of the story, that's fine. But you should have the official ruling, at least what they decided. And this is so weird yeah. to not have a reason why your world champion can't play at worlds again. It's, it's, it, you know, and basically it's just a punishment to not play at worlds again as well. Yeah. We yeah. don't even want like the judge's opinions or like the TO's opinion. We just want to be like, we, it would be nice to get a statement from them. Be like in like, based on what it was, like if it's the in round 12 or 13 or whatever it was, the winning in round, uh, Gabriel caught, uh, doing Melissa's activity, which, uh, when, you know, investigated, we determined was cheating or stacking, whatever you want to call it. And we've decided to penalize them with a DQ in the moment upon further investigation afterwards. Uh, we've decided to escalate that to a ban of three months. Um, or if it was the unsportsmanlike stuff, it's like a similar statement. And I, I agree with you, especially we don't need it for everything. And actually, there was a um, one of my friends on uh, made it uh, did like a, a tweet. Uh, Magic recently had a DQ happen where they made a statement about it. And I retweeted it. I was like, this is what we want in Pokemon on DQs and bans. Um, not we don't need it on all DQs and bans though, just like the high profile ones, right? The the ones where the co the community is left questioning what is going on, the the Gabriel situation, the Noah situation, yeah, the situations where the community is left questioning, uh, 
like TPCI's integrity or just left questioning in general, what is happening? Why did this happen? I think we those ones we should still want statements. On. We don't need statements on every DQ or every ban. Um, maybe if like the ban list was public, there could be still like a write up next to every player's name, but we don't need like an official statement put out there. But I feel like for the Gabriel situation and the Noah situation, it would be good. Those would be good things to just have that transparency with the community for sure. Yeah, it'd be a good start. And and how are people supposed to learn? You know, if this if this game is catering to kids and growing up and learning the rules and doing the right thing and all that, how do you how do you learn if you don't know, right? Uh, if it, if it's the tweet thing, you're going to have emotions. You're going to want your voice out there. And if you get you know banned for voicing an opinion on on what happened to you personally, that's you know suppression of free speech, right? You're getting punished. I mean, it, it's still a, a private forum and they can do what they want with with it but like how do you, you know how do you expect people to, to learn and grow if you don't know what what's in the rules and what's uh you know um what could get you banned from playing in worlds think of this now going forward with the new format you make worlds and you don't get a play because you said N the only way they can stop me is to dq me <laughs> it's a great tweet it was i thought it was funny uh, yeah i see yeah i said that one it is like, it was funny i like the confidence um yeah, it would be good to know, right? It would just be nice to know what 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 is allowed, what is not allowed, or what do they think? It just is pushes the line, and it's like instead of maybe sending this tweet, you should be like sending a support ticket. You know, having that communication uh, with TPCI directly in some form. Um, and I think the support ticket system has never been great, so maybe having like a different uh, avenue for that would be good. But yeah, that, I guess that is like another good point as well. How are we supposed to like know moving forward? Like, what are the where are the lines for like especially stuff like that? Like, what people are tweeting or saying? Um, like, what do they think is too far? And then we can make our own have our own opinions on that. But we just don't even know what is too far because they just don't tell us ever. Yeah. Otherwise, right now we're the yapping police, right? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I saw Gantner is requesting to speak. I'm gonna bring Gantner in here. Sure. See what he's got to say. Takes him like a second to connect. If they all right, there we oh, go. Can you hear me? How's it going, Gantner? Good, how are you? Going good. All right, floor's yours. Go ahead. All right. So um I just want to talk about the Vinny situation or not the Vinny, Gabriel situation. Um and like I I really doubt that the reason he got banned is due to like cheating or anything. Because we we saw a couple tweets from him and a couple other people just being like explaining the situation and everything. So I, I'd have to like say it's probably something outside of it. And I wanted to come on and like ask if um ask Grant because he's I know he's a lawyer. Is it is it like grounds if you get a DQ to like sue Pokemon, like a, like an unfair DQ? Because like I feel like it, at that point and you're suing Pokemon, wouldn't they just like ban you and like you can't play while you're suing Pokemon? I don't know. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, I think there is arguably a case. Uh, if it was unfair, because it is, like we said earlier, you know, depriving you of an opportunity at, at financial gain. So there is, uh, you know, a, a loss, essentially, a potential loss. Um, I don't know if they would not allow you to play. Um, they could definitely ban you again, but that would that would seem against the, the spirit of them, <laughs> the lawsuit that you originally would be filing. Uh, it's probably a, a, a no win. It'd be a tough one. I think obviously they have enough money and they're, they're saving it. Um, you know, not doing it on good events and stuff like that and instead using it uh, internally. Um, yeah, I, I could see I could see a cause of action for it. I don't think it'd be a winner, but um, there's definitely a case to be made. Some some ambitious, you know, young attorney wants to make a name. And a pretty decent paycheck. Although, what what you'd be losing out on is probably two hundred grand. Like we said, the potential for worlds at this at this point, worlds the trophy, the the card, and and the prize money two hundred fifty k. Right, right. So, lawyer makes you know fifty k at best for a well, to go up against a juggernaut. Well, I mean, in, in this case, like I, I'd be saying, like like theoretically, he'd be getting um, banned for presenting a lawsuit like in my in my mind it's like it doesn't like look good on pokemon to have somebody who's suing them currently playing the game you know so i feel like i feel like would that be part of the lawsuit if he was to sue 
Pokemon. So you're saying if behind the scenes, because of the DQ, Gabriel is suing Pokemon, that is right. leading to Pokemon banning him or yeah, during no. the... That would be like... I mean, oh, wildly unjustified on their side. And that would be like such bad PR if that ever came out, right? They can't, yeah, they can't. They can't ban sure, you. For, but... If he was suing them, they can't ban him for that. They can't like they can't like ban them over like the course no. of the lawsuit just to make sure that like you're not playing while you're in an active lawsuit against them. Yeah, no, they can't do that. If anything, that sounds like it. That'd be that'd be grounds for another lawsuit. Right, <laughs> like, <they'd> <laughs> Gabriel would sue him again, bro. <laughs> and that one, that one, you would win. Yeah. Oh sure, yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, I was just a little bit curious on that. Of course, of course. All like, right. Because he's an expert on that. All right. Thanks for calling in, Ganner. I appreciate it. All right, uh, I see Benny Billinger's here as well. I'll bring Benny in. Uh, move him. Let's see if he's got anything else on the Gabriel thing. And then we'll probably look to wrap it up. So, hey, up? hey how's it going, Benny? Um, so, yeah, so about the Gabriel situation. So, I've played uh, Gabriel twice this season. Um, I played him at UIC Finals, and I played him at NAIC. Um, I... I'm unsure if um, the DQ is warranted. I don't believe that he's a cheater. Um, I think he's obviously a very good player as well. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I don't think uh, that Gabriel uh, cheated at all. Um, I have a question. So for for Grant specifically, um, when Gabriel got DQ'd, um, his his whole his family was there. His parents were there. Um, and it looked like that they were like arguing with the judges a little bit. Do you think that uh, he could get banned for anything um, that his parents would do? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I think that's yeah, very that, possible. Like, yeah, I saw that there was like some uh, some stuff there that uh, his parents were were doing. Like that. there was a whole thing with his parents within the judges and stuff. Well, we saw last time uh, the the guy who called in last time the parent got banned. Oh, yeah. And actually, like that, I don't know the exact. I remember having this talk with one of the bigger judges in my area back when I lived in Boston. Like when I first started playing, it's like if you get DQ'd from an event, it's not just you who has to leave the venue, but you and everyone else you're with. So, like, if a kid gets DQ'd and can't come back to the venue, the parents also can't come back to the venue, nor would, ah, it, dude, this is so long ago. The rules and the way they, they manage that maybe it changed. I don't want to like misspeak, but it's, it's so long. That was so long once I've had that, uh, conversation, maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, it's been so long. I don't want to misspeak on that at all, but that that's like in my head. I mean, the, I mean the kid and the parents would maybe be tied together for sure. Um, as far as like, if, if you're DQ'd and can't come back here, then you're the parents aren't allowed back in either, which would make sense. But then yeah, also parents getting out of line definitely can lead to, kids getting DQ'd and that could be where the ban actually comes from to be honest um yeah because like I'm struggling to think of like uh another way that Gabriel could get DQ'd because like I think in his post like everything kind of lined up so like I don't really think that like he cheated uh at all and like St uh, stacking a stamp thing. against Snorlax yeah stacking a stamp <laughs> against Snorlax yeah. and I don't think you can really like get banned for a Twitter post. Like that, the Twitter post, obviously, I don't think you should have made the Twitter post. I think making a Twitter post after a DQ most of the time is just a bad thing. Um, but I don't think that they could ban him for something like that, right? Uh, maybe people have been banned for DMs before, so I yeah, wouldn't I mean, be. People, I guess people have been banned for like a little bit less. Yeah, and I think um, anything that is overly hateful or whatever, I think it's fine for TPCI to be like, eh, we don't want that mindset or in our community i don't think it's like terrible like when when things reach a certain level of toxicity or or hatefulness and i'm not against that i don't think wholly uh, of course it depends how far it goes or what they're but actually of course doing. gabriel uh of course gabriel being a minor right? i feel like that they would probably be like more lenient on it especially considering he's young and you still have a lot to learn there's obviously a language uh barrier there as well so maybe some of the stuff he translated uh, um but i feel like giving a ban out for like a twitter post like that just doesn't seem like something that tbci would do yeah, yeah that's we, what we don't know what they're capable of <laughs> that's true that's 100 percent true 
I mean, that's why it'd be nice to just for them to just be transparent about it, because then we're just like sit here, sit here, second guessing, like, and just just really like these high profile things. Like this is like, this is like the up and coming best, like up and coming best senior uh, Gabriel is, like unquestionable with like his his achievements this season, and then he sells like what another season or two of seniors division. Um, so he could like stack more on yeah, that he's heading. Very young. Yeah, he could stack more on that going to the masters division. It's just like. Um, it just feels like really weird to be left in the dark here as a community with such a high profile player in, in one of these kind of situations. It would be nice for them to just clear the air because now we're just set here. We've come up with two different scenarios where like this could be, if it wasn't cheating, could have been because of the Twitter thing or other behind the scenes, um, other behind the, uh, behind the scenes, unsportsmanlike conduct or like you brought up, like, you know, if uh, parents or people Gabriel was with at the event got a little bit too fired up um, back talking the judges a little bit too much, then that could have been the result as well. But I'd be so yeah. pissed if my parents <laughs> did that. First and foremost, yeah, going somebody in the chat, Karen, Karen mode, like, oh my god, dude. <laughs> not only weird. embarrassing, but then do you a ban? Yeah, no way, dude. Very unfortunate. All right. Yeah, I, I also would like to see um, a response on the Noah situation because, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was proved that Noah wasn't stacking. So. Uh, I want to see what TCI would do because that cost him his invite. Like, I feel like I know a lot of people have uh, sent in support tickets to try and uh, get him the points required. Um, but I want to know what TCI would do about that as well. Yeah, I'm just hoping at the very least with how much uh, commotion was brought up or how much discussion there was around that, that they at least reinvestigated it and like internally like this is all we can hope for because they're not going to make a statement internally just maybe this leads to them being a little bit more thorough as long as they agree that he wasn't stacking uh with their process at events for trying to uh re, re uh, review gameplay from the stream uh, that's like the very least we're gonna hope for but i i don't know if um we're gonna we're probably not gonna hear anything about that one either but once again it'll be nice to have that transparent response from them um whether they think but my, my thing with this one that one recently has actually just been if he did if they think he did it i would be hard pressed uh it would be uh i, I think they would probably ban him as well but yeah he hasn't been banned yet as far as i know so I guess we'll see in the in the coming weeks. Like, there's only so many like only so many weeks. Like Gabriel's situation was at NAIC as well, so there can't be too many more weeks to go before they're kind of just done with that situation. So next week, maybe the week after, but at that point, past that, I feel like that's kind of the time period. And then if they don't ban Noah, then I feel like that's should be a tell enough that he probably didn't. Uh, they don't think he cheated in the in the yeah, end, she, unless they just think, yeah. well, you don't have your world's invite, so. Because we ban it, we we ban Gabriel just so he wouldn't like. It's like we're gonna, we the only thing we would ban you for if we thought you did cheat would be you not being able to go to Worlds. But because you didn't get Worlds invite, you're not going to Worlds anyway. So we're not gonna ban you at all. You already got your punishment because you don't have your Worlds invite. That's um, twisted. Yeah, yeah that'd be, that'd be toxic. <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it past them. So maybe that's their take on it. I don't know. All right, thanks yeah. for coming on, Benny. Thank you. Yeah, thank Benny. you so much. All right, have a good one. Yeah. All right. I don't know. Did you have any? I think that wraps up all my thoughts. We had the couple call-ins as well. That wraps up my thoughts on everything in the Gabriel situation. I don't know if you had any final final thoughts on that one, though. No, it's just, a, a, again, another example of the, you know, they, they said they're going to be more transparent about these things. And yep. obviously, they lied to us. I actually want to go, go back and go read. Does anyone have a link to that? I want to go back and read that. Um, that would have been last last year. Yeah, it was a it was a while ago now. I can't um, think of what tournament that was. was. Rowan, right? Or was it no? It was uh, Makani. No. So they made the statement about being more transparent with future statements after the Makani situation, and then they did make a statement on the Rowan situation. But I'm trying to find. Makani would have been Orlando. Was it Orlando or Charlotte? Charlotte. Yeah. Was it? Char I don't even remember. Uh, it was at Charlotte. It was one of the yeah the. That was a while ago. Huh. Is it? If we just Help go us out, chat. Yeah, we're the chat detectives. If we just like scroll back through the news, was it? It had to have popped up in the news section, right? Yeah. All right, hang on. I'm scrolling. You can't really. I don't know if there's like a time period jump. Um. Let me see. I'm still scrolling. I'm in March 2024.
Wait, was it in 2024 or 2023? It was in 2023, right? Yeah. So Charlotte was March 23. Oh my gosh. Wait, and then Rowan won in Hartford May 23. Okay, so it was in between those two that the statement was made. Right. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't make a statement about the Makani situation. They just said that they're going to make statements. <laughs> yeah, they just said they're going to be more transparent and more transparent moving forward. But I feel like these are the type of situations where that makes sense. Maybe they think it has to go a little bit more extreme, but do we need like Rowan situations to happen for them to make a statement? Like that seems like unnecessarily extreme for, for that to be the only thing they ever make statements on. Maybe, they're, but I don't know. I guess like we also... The thing is like we don't have any idea of like what does the time frame look like for them making statements as well right because like they made one statement so far and i don't know how long after the rowan situation the statement came out maybe it was like two or three weeks um but like it would also be nice to know like wh so that way we could like make that you know that guess and be like well this happened but pokemon users didn't make their statements until like three weeks after the incident so we know three weeks from now is when we can probably expect it and then we can fully give our full opinions after we see that but Hmm. And I'm still scrolling here. I'm trying to find. I'm in a April 2023 in the news section. It probably would be sometime in April, right? Yeah. I don't know if it was like posted on like the official. Was it did it like get posted on like the official news area? I wish I knew how to search Twitter I better. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think of like who would have maybe posted. That's actually a good a good thought. Who would have posted it on Twitter? Who's always honestly Rahul might have probably retweeted it. I maybe did as well. I'm pretty sure the Pokemon Day presents. Did they delete it? <laughs> Hopefully not. Oh, that'd be uh, awesome. All right, so this is February. Yeah, that's why they haven't been transparent because they <laughs> removed their their take on being transparent moving forward. Um, let me give this one last one last look through, and then we can move on to the next topic if we can't find it. Because I'm very curious, actually, what that statement said. Because I remember my takeaway was this is a statement about making statements in the future about being more transparent. Um, but I can't find it now. Try this. Yeah, that's what I'm on. I tried transparent transparency. Yeah, I can't. I don't like it. I don't remember anything else from that. All right. Well, we can move on to the next topic. Yeah. If somebody finds it, we can circle back around, but yeah. Whatever. And the next topic is of course, uh, everything to do with the 2025 season, uh, which is a lot, but I wanted to just start by getting your overall thoughts on everything because, um, I would say you overall, like last, like two seasons ago, you played for your world's invite this season. You didn't even attempt to play for your world's invite. Now with like the new system and everything, um, what is your take going into the season? Yeah, it's very sad. I'm I'm sad for Pokemon in general. Uh, another L uh, for Big Peak. Um, <laughs> it's it's just so I, I get it. Like a new format and things like that are fun and exciting, but uh, like the top player instead of having a threshold, I think is a disincentive. For people like at least you know what you could what you can do to get your invite now it's like okay i can try my hardest and do my best and still not make it which is really unfortunate like i'm i'm obviously i'll try because i'll just top four something and that'll be that right a one and done it um when i first saw the news i was like great i don't have to go to the crappy regionals baltimore louisville sacramento like awesome um but I think, you know, people all this talk about the ICs as well. It's like, if you can go to the three ICs, I think that's a, a great avenue to get three of your finishes. Cr crossing the IC and the regional finishes as, as a best limit of six is, is wild to me. Because think about this. If you go um, like five, if you, if you have like five top 32s or six top 32s and a top 64 at an IC, it's going to take your top 32s and you're going to leave points on the board. You actually don't get more points for having a, a technically a better finish at an IC. 
So well, no, it'll be it'll be our highest placing championship point finishes. Is it by CP and not? I would hope so. Yeah, I would hope so. That, I, that would make sense, but it, we're talking about Pokemon here. <laughs> that yeah, I, I'm assuming it is taking your best six championship point finishes. Although now that you've brought that up, I wonder if they're ladder system that they use for the leaderboard can handle that can handle that calculation <laughs> yeah no shot <laughs> um but yeah i'm assuming it's going to be your your top six championship point finishes not your top six placement finishes that would make no sense for sure yeah I, the whole thing in general is just a it, it it's uh you know you're an elite player right you're you're a top player this, these things really won't affect you maybe for stipends that's the only thing for me representing the common man um you know limiting best finishes at, at locals those are the those are the best part of pokemon you know going to locals and you know cups challenges double cup weekend uh that loses some luster at this point um it's just uh i think it's it, overall just a big loss um and and again not knowing where you're at like you'll you'll see yourself okay i'm i'm 100th and you know, I have no more events left. I've I've maxed out my locals or whatever, and then you get passed up before worlds. Like I, you know, you could play the best season of your life, um, and I, I wonder how they picked. And maybe it's just arbitrary now, and maybe that'll change. You know, we've seen seen them change the CP threshold before. If they'll go back and change it when they see um, some of the numbers, because one twenty five. If you look at uh, the qualification numbers, um, you know, this year two hundred seventy one masters from NA. So that's less than half. Yeah. And even even greater losses for EU, um, LATAM and, and OC, like they're you know, they're dropping those numbers down so far. I wonder, you know, it's regionals in a um you know, in a small castle in in Spain. You know, like where are they having worlds that they have to cut the number in uh, in a quarter? That's true. I guess, like, I mean, one of, part of it might be prestige, part of it might be attendance, and I guess, like, that would be a fair point. Actually, that's, like, one point that um, uh, uh, Steve, owner of TC Evolutions, brought up was, like, he wasn't, one of the things that he brought up, he's like, he's not wholly against the changes, but he thought it was, like, too much too quick. Um, Absolutely. So having, like, a more exclusive world championships, and I've said this before, um, this is, like, something I don't really have that strong of an opinion on. Uh, but I am starting to form it a little bit more uh, with all the discussions going around this. Um, but I think I could, I think I can definitely agree with that. Is like maybe this is a little bit too fast, too soon. Um, unless, of course, their next step next season is to go from 125 to 100 and then to 75, and then to 50. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think I, I, I would be surprised if we go to like less than 125 and maybe they'll backtrack it a little bit and make it a little bit bigger next season. Or, I mean, I guess they could, they probably really don't want to do like, a part way through the season change. I don't think they definitely don't want to do that. They don't want to like halfway through the season be like, Oh, now it's 150. Right. Um, they've done that once before, maybe twice. If I remember correctly, where they've like changed championship points received and the threshold for worlds, but now they know exactly how many players are going to be showing up to worlds for sure. Which, I mean, they picked these numbers with some kind of reason behind that. I'm sure. Right. So they wanted this amount of players to be at worlds or, percentage of them because some people won't show up probably even if they get their invite but less likely in this system than past systems yeah and you know what honestly if we're talking about big peak here we're always talking about money and you don't make money from the world's invites you make money from spectator passes right yeah the, the, it definitely seems like that's probably they want to grow the world championships in that realm if they're cutting back on competitors probably right yeah and you know, I, I, Hawaii and, and Japan might be more difficult, but, you know, let's say it's a more uh, accessible uh, location. Now you can sell out, you know, four times as many spectator passes, which means four times as much Pokemon Center m merch. And it's just, uh, you know, feeding the cash cow, feeding the cash mill tank. Yeah, definitely will. Um, I guess I, yeah, I, the way you kind of phrased that earlier, actually, I kind of resonate with a little bit more is the way you said, like, and it made me kind of think, like, you can have, like, a really good start to your season. One thing I will say, actually, before I forget, uh, on, like, the 6BFL, this is an improvement for this system for players who can't travel as much as opposed to the previous system, right? 
because now your regional finishes, let's say you can only go to one IC, your regional finishes can compete against someone else's IC finishes, right? That's but if, true, yeah. But if it was six B, if it was like a, a four BFL for regionals and no BFL for ICs, your your four regional finishes are competing against everyone else's four regional finishes. So theoretically, an IC BFL of like one would still make it better, but this is an improvement for this system for people who can't travel as much compared to separate BFLs, right? So it is still an, an improvement for, for those that subsection of players, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, because now your regional finishes can compete against IC finishes. Of course, the IC finishes are a lot better. They are harder, though, to achieve, right? Bigger tournament uh, overall. And I, I do like the, the massive amount of points they're giving to the higher finishes for sure, which, once again, like going to that, back to that, if you can't travel as much... You just need to. You do just need to do better at the terms you can go to. But if you do do really well, like the, this is an like, if you get top eight in IC, you get six hundred championship points. I guess you're just one round away from your world's invite at that point. But let's say you get top sixteen, that's four hundred. Top thirty two is three fifty. Like, you do need to have these better performances. And um, the one the one thing that I've always the, the one takeaway I've had from all this discussion is just that I if the if the mentality isn't already there of trying to be better and win these tournaments, these major tournaments, if that's not already the mentality of the players who are trying to get their world's invite, if a system change has to force that mentality on the players, then I think I'm okay with that overall. I'm okay with the invite being easier if the players who are trying to play for their world's invite are playing towards the mentality of trying to be better players and think they can win these tournaments as well as win the world championships. But it feels like a lot of people aren't trying to win tournaments, they're trying to get their world's invite. Um, and I'm okay if those players getting to world championships no longer exists. So whether that invites easier or harder, the players who I want at the world championships are the ones who are trying to win majors throughout the year and then trying to win the world championships. Yeah. Spoken like a true elitist. Uh <laughs> like I said, it, I, like I said, it could be even easier than last year to get a world's invite as long as that was the mentality we had, but, it, but no one in the, like the, not no one in the community, too much of the players who are able to achieve their world's invite last year don't have that mentality, like way too many. So I just want that to, I wanted like there to be a competitive winner's mentality in the people who are trying to get their world's invite. Like, I don't think that's like a bad thing to say about competition. Um, like I said, yeah, whether it's easier or, or harder to get your world's invite doesn't really matter to me. It's all about the mentality that the players have in the game that are competing at the game. Yeah, but that that can't be everybody's, you know, mentality. I get it. Play to win, right? It's should a, you should you be at the world competitive card game? Should you be at the world championships if you're not playing to win? Like if you're not, not and no one's ever not playing to win. But I think people get what I say when people, they're like people generally weren't playing to win tournaments or to win worlds. They were playing to get their world's invite, right? I think those are two different things. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I got mine, it was at Fresno, right? I, I locked it up on day one. And then uh, after I played you, I moved my flight up. You know, it's like, I'm go I don't I don't care. Yeah. I'm going home. I, I got it. <laughs> so um, I'm OK with that adjustment. Um, we have let's get Aiden. Aiden's calling in. We can uh, get sure. Aiden in here real fast and then we'll go through some more of these other points that were brought up. Because I'm very curious about your take specifically on all this stuff, because coming from like a very different perspective than someone like me or like most people I've talked to. So I'll approve Aiden here, get him in. I'll take a second. Yep. Yo. Yo. How's it going? What's up? Okay. I just like came in to like discuss a quick point. Um, so we're talking about the 25, 2025 season. Um, I feel like the, them making the invites less accessible to everyone mainly just really has something to say about the location that like this world could be just because like, in Japan, like, I, we definitely had issues with just, like, how many people were invited. Like, the convention center just seemed way too packed. I mean, like, also, like, the, um, they didn't really allot us a ton of space. Like, I, I don't know if, like, Tokyo, there's a bigger convention center, but, like, I felt like the convention center, at least last year, was, like, a little bit lacking in space. So, maybe this is, like, saying that the worlds could be in, like, somewhere, like, maybe, like, a more touristy European city or, like, maybe, like, Singapore or something like that. Yeah, I, I yeah. mean that that'd be a reasonable take because I mean they let a lot of well that's it is, it is they put us in Hawaii, severely limited the spectator badges as far as I can tell, but we still have this is like one of gonna be like the biggest worlds ever for competitors, but I guess that lines up put it in Hawaii where not pe many people are gonna want to go just to participate, um and there's just like I mean there's just not that many people I don't even know how many people live on like the island we're going to, 
Um, so the chance that there's like a ton of people who want to show up to like spectate the event isn't going to be as high. So we let a lot of competitors in. I, I really hate that mindset from TPCI, but it does feel like we've kind of had that sometimes where it's like, they're kind of just like, where do we want to put world? It's like, okay, how many people do we want to let in based on that? And like, yeah, cause like what if next year they increase it to like 250 just based on location? Well, yeah, personally, I think that they should have worlds in like a place like, like one of the bigger like convention cities in like the U S or like they could have it in like. I know that there's a decent size of like big convention centers in like Europe and like I think like Dubai has a huge convention. There's a lot of big convention centers around the world. It just like seems like Pokemon is trending in the direction of like having worlds in these cities with like not huge venues, but more just like of like a spectacle of an event. Yeah, I know of a city that has unlimited convention center space, unlimited hotels, cheap flights from everywhere in the world. It's called Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Dude, that'd be lit. Uh, yeah. And think of the marketing on that, you know, uh, the Pikachu, your gambling Pikachu. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like it, feel, it feels almost like Pokemon wants like worlds to be like their Disney world more than like anything, at least like at this point. That could be the angle for sure. Moving forward, like more, more of an event, more of a convention or like event for Pokemon, less of the com competition. But the competition would obviously still be there. Um. I, as far as the venue, like going back to Japan, I thought it was fine. Obviously, I haven't been to any other worlds, but um, the fact that they took over the entire city, right? Yeah. Everything yeah. was Pokemon everywhere. It felt like worlds. It didn't feel like just a, you know, a regional. Like I've, I've heard stories of the, you know, old worlds in like Nashville, um, the Vancouver, where it was just like, you only knew it was worlds if you're in the building because of a few banners like this felt like an event. So I don't know how they'll do that. If, if it'll regress at all being in Hawaii, um, I guess we'll find out here in, uh, you know, a month and a few days, but, um, you want to see something like that again, where the whole city where it takes over, right. That makes worlds feel special. That is true. Yeah. They've never had a worlds like that before. That's the first time worlds has ever felt that much of like, and maybe it is because, uh, it's in Japan, and, you know, I'm sure, I don't know. There's more people in Japan who probably are trying to make that happen, but maybe it was TPCI stepping up and making the right connections and getting all that stuff set up as well. Maybe it's a little bit of both. And, well, yeah, Hawaii will be a good tell for that for sure, of, like, how far is TPCI pushing it versus how far was it just, well, we're in Japan, so obviously it's going to be that much bigger and better. And then, like, the year after, Hawaii will be, a, a like, a follow-up tell for that. Um, I would really just, I just want them to set the standard for what they want the world's invite to be though. I don't want them to constantly be like major fluctuating. Obviously like there's going to be a big, and maybe that's why Pokemon did make such a drastic change just immediately. Cause they're like, okay, now we know what we want. We're just going to do it next year. Instead of like, you know, year over year, making it getting closer and closer to what they want. Instead of, you know, they start with 250 top 250 masters and then they cut it down to uh, 200 and then 150 and then 125. They're just like, you know, just pull it off like a bandaid real fast. And then, just write down 125 top top x down to 125 we just want to do it as soon as possible just do what we want to do get that locked up and i would like to see them i don't i don't want them to make zero changes if they feel like there's a better way to help the system out a little bit but like come up with what their standard is for the world's invite and try and just maintain that year over year you know with slight changes if they feel like it's necessary but hopefully they can like get that locked in uh this it may, hopefully they start getting that locked in you know with these drastic changes hopefully that's what's leading to that because it'd, be, yeah, it'd be really weird like if next season all of a sudden it's 300 masters from us and canada get their world's invites like well what is like what is going on? is it literally just based on the venue size yeah it like it, it could be it could be based on that but like i i mean there's there's no perfect system and like i've like personally just like not really made huge opinions on the new system just because like I genuinely do not think that there's a perfect system. I think one benefits like certain players and the other benefits certain players. But I mean, the fact that people are quitting like before the season starts is just like, I mean, I think that like the people that are like quitting Pokemon right now or saying that they're going to quit Pokemon are people that would be like fringe, like invite players to begin with. And like, if anything, it's just like saving money in their pockets. Yeah, because, like, yeah, they would probably be able to get their world's invite, most likely, if they tried for it in, like, the old system. But new system is, like, so... The unknown is just too daunting uh, to want to walk into, which I think is reasonable. I think that's a reasonable take for people to have in those situations. Um, I mean, if you're able to still go to that one regional and win it, of course, you can still end up with your world's invite. But um, it definitely makes sense. Uh, I had, like, another yeah. thing I was going to follow up with that. Go ahead, Grant. 
yeah, that that was my issue, right? Like it just it's dis disincentivized so many people. Like I'm not gonna try hard. Uh, I would have. I probably would have gone to one of the crappy early regionals. Um, but now it's like, okay, what's the point, really? Uh, you know, I could I could be that fringe player. I I am that fringe player, right? Um, but yeah, it saves it saves you money. But like that's that's part of the fun. Taking a season, say, okay, I'm trying the season. I'm going to go to six regionals. I'm going to go to two ICs and, and compete. And then still not to know where you're at at the end. It, it it's, uh, you know, what, what's the point? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, personally, like whenever, like I had the full season of like traveling last year. So like, I feel like whenever I was going to less regionals in a season, I was enjoying them like a lot more. Um, Cause it just felt like, it felt like more of like, an opportunity more than like a responsibility but like um i mean I, th I think for the casual player like if i like probably going forward at least for me like i'm gonna try and attend like less regionals and like make them just like better experiences um because like they, they are like really good events and it's like really cool to like see all your friends and stuff um but i mean i think just going to every event also kind of has like this unhealthy mindset where you're like, I'm like literally just grinding to like try and stay in this race or stay in whatever. I mean, like with, with the new system, at least like capping BFL at six, combining the ICs and regionals, I feel like it does may mean that like the better players have like can afford to go to less events and it's like fine compared to like where the old season, like the old season, it's like you could get like nine majors placements on your BFL. And I feel like attending nine tournaments even from like the average player, because like the average player probably has to go to like multiple ICs to get their worlds invite with the current structure. So, I mean, I think that like this is like definitely a lot more attainable for people that can just get like one spike rather than like someone who just consistently gets two, 256 at like every single tournament. Yeah, I mean, and we can. We could uh, throw the system off and collude and, and get every a different person in top four every time, and uh, <laughs> you know, and, and bump those numbers up. Uh, but yeah, I do think I do like picking your regionals and trying hard for like one, you know, because it is uh, it's it's almost unhealthy uh, for people. But then you have the other side of things like the the pro player aspect, where going to these events is to to make money or to try to make money. Uh, you know, you fly cheap, you stay in a, a room with eight people. And you, you come out with a couple grand is, is uh, you know, pretty sweet gig playing a, a card game. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, and there's like more players, I think, right now that like are doing this full time more than like any other time that I could tell. Um, I mean, we'll see how sustainable it is for those people. I mean, for, I mean, Azul's doing pretty nice over there. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I think it's just like time will tell. The growth of the game is definitely a little bit stunted. I say because like I mean I feel like the coaching market will probably be in a low for most people this year just because there's less people going for that invite. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, there's like stuff that will happen. Like those, there's consequences of Pokemon's decisions. Uh, well, like we don't really know what the consequences will be because it's too early right now. Um, but I mean, I'm sure we'll see like midway through the season, like if the system really works or it really can work or not. And then like I feel like halfway through the season. We'll be able to make like that proper judgment, and like, then you'll you'll see the tweets coming in, being like, "All right, hey, like, we've given this a shot. Like, this is like not working, or maybe it is working." Yeah, but that and that's the problem though with them making such a drastic change right away, right? Like, yeah, it, you don't have it, they don't have to do that. You can ease into it. We could switch to the the X finishes. We could switch to the different BFLs and do it over a course of two or three seasons and put it all together. And that helps, you know, it, cause it's going to look bad when they have to go back and, you know, we can't really speculate cause it's too early, but I will, you know, I, I'll go ahead. I'll say it's the death of the game. This change is going to kill <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> think, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty uh, hot take. <laughs> yeah, somebody's got to Somebody's got to make it. You think this is going to put a, put a decline on the competitive growth? Absolutely. Hmm. And I think, uh, it would have been oh, worse if, sure. if Lorcana, if they didn't kill the Pixelborn 
app. So there's no online client for that. Like there's only a few avenues to go, you know, not, people aren't really going to jump to, you know, magic. Maybe it's the one piece. I'm not sure. I, I know a lot of people play that too. Um, but a new card game that has a lot of support, uh, you can show up and, and win a, a prize card that goes for thousands of dollars for being like top 32, top 64. It's crazy. I think it's like top 16 now for, uh, for one piece, but it's like, it's so unattainable to get to worlds and like any other card game, like worlds and the other card games is like extremely unattainable. Yeah. True. Yeah. I thought it was funny because so, I saw I saw someone like asking that question like what do the other systems look like in other card games after like this information got out and I was just thought, I thought it was funny because I was like hey, getting to worlds in any other card game is still way harder than Pokemon like you're not it's not it's not even close yeah it's literally not close for for One Piece I know for sure for One Piece because I've been like trying to like get more competitive into that recently and like I think you literally have to be first and second at Nats and Nats is like the most competitive <laughs> tournament of the year like there's like this year it's like only invite only you have to like get like top 32 at a regional or like top four at a store regional which is like impossible to get into it's like a 64 player cap and there's only like 20 in like the u.s and like there's 300 people that applied to like each one and i didn't get into any i like applied for six so it's it's like pretty just impossible to get the world's invite for that i mean then they they have such low caps their events sell out in minutes so it's like th there's no real perfect card game i mean like you go play Yu-Gi-Oh, where you get like a nintendo switch for like getting first <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like there's no perfect card game i think pokemon is for sure the best one for the average just like looking to go travel for a card game it's definitely pokemon because that one's the most rewarding and you don't have to be like extremely just extremely good at the game like you don't have to be like All the in. top 0 0.01 percent of players um but <laughs> um i mean yeah. I, it's there's definitely differences where's where's like well the one piece world's at is it in like a like is there eight people in a hotel lobby bar like what is um, it last year it was in japan i think they oh, called wow. it like some bandai thing uh I'm, I'm not like for sure um i mean i know like Yu-Gi-Oh does like the different locations. Like they they have theirs in Seattle this year. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Yeah, I think even with like, because I've been saying this for a while. I think as long as you enjoy playing the Pokemon TCG, like even with these changes, the Pokemon TCG is still the best card game to be playing in from accessibility, uh, tournament structure, prizing, all that stuff. Um, I think the only thing we're missing is promo co promo cards, and then it'll like outclass everything by quite a bit. Um, but yeah, that's I think all we wanted. That's all we wanted. <laughs> <laughs> that's all they had to do. I Dude, think... the stamp the stamp promo cards would like make so much of a difference, and like they don't even know. Yeah, I mean, look at the prize packs. How much that changed things. Everyone yeah. wants the prize packs. But I think we'll have yeah. to wait this next season. I think there's definitely going to be the the amount of unknown and what am what am I even playing this game for at this point? Just because like because of the way the game has been for so long in the Pokemon TCG. This next season, there might be a hit to the competitive, but I think that we can't write uh, or we won't really know for sure how much this impacts it until the season afterwards. Because a lot of people are entering the season already, like kind of doom and gloom. But once we know what the expectations look like for what is achievable in the game, uh, what else they're kind of do as far as other things to attempt to try and achieve in the game, like with their championship championship point rewards program, depending on what that looks like, um, then I think people's expectations will. Pr I, my prediction is ex people's expectations will adjust throughout this season or going into next season, and basically nothing is going to change in terms of the way people view or play the game. Um, obviously, there'll be like people who like who maybe went to, like, five regionals this season who will probably only go to three. But, like, all of our regionals were capping in attendance anyways. And I think the casual player base is still growing at a decent rate. So there's going to be plenty of players to still fill those seats. Yeah, and I think we'll see how big the venues are, too. I mean, the big thing for me, at least, is that, like, they just need to big book bigger venues. Like, it's, like, at least if they're going to, like, make worlds inaccessible for, like, a ton of players, they should definitely try and make their other events, like, very accessible. Like... Yeah. No one's like no one's saying that we shouldn't have like huge regionals or huge ICs and like no one really complains about those. Like I I feel like that seeing more people at all those events is always like just good for everyone. Um I mean sure like it's like a little annoying bubbling out of cut at like twelve three, but like it's it's no one's like blaming that on the amount of people that showed up to the tournament. Yeah. I mean they did give us the number of four thousand nine hundred or four thousand and ninety seven players to get that fifth round in day two now. So they they <laughs> we know the number they they know what the number is. They found the number, um, or I guess they're just using like the true Swiss system. So that is the number for true Swiss. So 
numbers out there. They even like brought light to it by putting it in the article. So, um, all right, yeah. Thanks for coming on, Aiden. I'm gonna get the next Thanks. caller in here, but appreciate it as always. No problem. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get Grant Hayes in here because I think he was next, and then we have James as well. I'm gonna call up Grant. Hopefully this works. I might have to actually. Re this has happened before. I might have to re refresh the page. On the yeah, while you're doing that, on the topic of bigger venues, it, sure. Um, a lot of them feel clunky. Uh, I think it's more of an issue of like you know the the one door in. Uh, uh, I, think I think at, at least at New Orleans, they let people leave through any of the doors. Normally, it's like the one door out, and so it just becomes so clustered on the entrance area. Um, but there was a ton of space and the tables were still stacked. It just yeah. makes, you know, the moving between rounds, you know, oh, I, I, I track the yeah. times and it's like five minutes between rounds. Like if you're not there ready to go, like you're not going to get to your seat right away. So one thing I'd like to see changed is space out the tables a little bit more wider and then put, uh, put signs at the end of the uh, aisles to show the number. So yeah. you know where you're going. You're not just walking all the way across aimlessly trying to find a number because we're getting up to, you know, 2,000 tables. It's like, okay, where am I going? Yeah, so bigger yeah. bigger venues, not just for the sake of getting more players in there, but for making everything a little bit more spacious, a little bit more yeah. comfortable playing experience. I'm, I'm down with that. What's going on, Hayes? Uh, not much. Just got home from work, started taking notes. Uh, Kuz, Kuz is not the smartest tool in the shed. I know him pretty well, but he did make some good <laughs> points. So, um, so, so one thing that I think you guys haven't mentioned, which might might matter, might not, um, but I think so. The way they pick the world's location, I could be totally wrong on this too. But to my knowledge, it's just like one guy, and then it goes through a vetting process with other people, and then other stuff later on. So, I'm not sure exactly whether they pick the venue before they pick the invite system. But I would imagine the venue actually does come first because that's such like a bigger deal to actually get the logistics of. I think something else that could matter too, and it might not matter anymore, but it definitely has the last two years, um, is with COVID, they're basically like two years behind with like all of their venues and stuff. So Hawaii is supposed to be like the 10 year anniversary of the last Hawaii, but it's like 12 years instead of 10 and stuff like that. So that could be something that matters for this. Um, I agree. I think that I think the moving everything all at once was maybe a little sudden. I heard they were going to do it in a year, but it seems like they're doing it right now. But it could just be a reason for why things are the way they are. Um, what else do I have here? Okay, people already quit. Okay, bro, this is not going to be the death of the game. That is like, that is like not <laughs> true. Like, okay, so a, a good point for this. And we talked about Magic and other games a little bit. So I used to, I don't know as much about their OP system now, but I did a lot like pre-COVID. Like Magic's like basically their ICs are like really hard to qualify for and their worlds is literally like you have to be their worlds is like 16 people and stuff and their game was like always bigger like their events were always really large like I know Vegas was mentioned earlier like their like basically Vegas regional was like 3,000 people and stuff I think um and so this is there's a couple other things to reference too um I don't know if he's in here anymore I think he was a little bit earlier but Christopher Shemansky made a really good article on 6p like it's a little dated like five years ago where he basically took all the regional attendance and tracked like how many people went to one regional versus like a bunch of regionals and stuff. And it was like 90% of people went to for like a specific regional only went to that regional and stuff. So I think this system as a whole impacts such a small like percent of people that it's not going to matter that much in the scheme of things. I think things probably still grow. It's just the attitude is different. I, I am guilty of the just like get invite sort of thing. I've kind of spent the last two years like, spend winter break going to events, and then I go back to doing homework. But I like going to step after I already have my invite. And I think that's like a, the, the big point I think is you're going to see the mindset shift of like, I just, I want to win this event. I'm not trying to get this many points. I don't want 256. I think that's already started to happen, but you're going to see it happen by and large as things kind of go on. Um, Robin made a really good tweet a long time ago that was like, his, his mindset going into every event is just like, I want to win the event. I don't care what place I am. I don't care how many points, like all of that stuff beforehand. It's just trying to do that. So I think you're just, that's just going to be a, be a, a way bigger shift. Um, I think kind of my last few things, I wanted to touch on some of the stuff that Q's mentioned. Um, less events probably is good for the sake of like, everyone gets to chill. It's not just like a grinder. I've never been like a 16 grinder. So I don't really have that sort of like opinion on it. But I think in general, it's probably a good thing that it's not, so many events we don't have the, like the event off week and then back to event as much now which i think is good um 
I think the other thing too you guys mentioned too is just the scheme of worlds as like an event and like the spectator badges. That is a good point I didn't think about because worlds at this point it probably is like it is definitely becoming more of like a spectacle than it is just like a tournament for sure. Um, I know some people last year who they were just like played day one and then I kind of talked to them afterwards because there's people going to the trading stuff and all that. And they're like, yeah, it probably was like more profitable to just trade and like sell stuff all day than actually like play day one of worlds, which is like crazy. But I think we're, we're kind of getting that direction where it's just becoming more of like a spectacle and they're trying to kind of push it and present it in that way. Um, in terms of venues and size and stuff that leads into that, I literally think we're getting to the point where there just like aren't bigger venues that can put people in. Like we're going to hit like a finite number of stuff. I know I've talked to some of the EU guys and they say like, like there is no venue bigger than Excel. Like that's why it's always going to be there. So that's like a very finite resource. And I think that kind of shapes a lot of where things are coming from. And like in terms of organizing and location, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Yeah, well, I think first off the three less regionals, mm -hmm. uh, as far as we know, I think that's a bad thing, right? If, if, the, if those stats still hold true, going to one regional, you know, now you've made it harder for X number of people, right? There's only... Yeah one less I'm, in each region i'm sure it's oh i think the other thing too with that i'm sure it's like an organizer thing i don't know if day two gets all the regionals this year or i look somebody gets like all of them i'm pretty sure so if it's like one set of organizers doing everything it's probably something with that it could also be something with like the prize money i'm not really as sure on that but if they're upping our prizing maybe they up they lower the amount of total regionals i'm not sure if that actually matters but that could be part of it too yeah it'll be that'll be interesting for sure uh i mean what the landscape of everything actually like looks like um one thing that i took note of at the beginning of last season and i looked out for this season was like are there going to be any majors that overlap with each other and there already is there's already uh joinville and dortmund because like there's like if you spread everything out and try and like put a spotlight on everything individually like it t turns everything into more of like a circuit um yeah. and makes things more interesting from a spectator point of view um as like a competitor um, especially when you're seeing like the same players like one week they're in the u.s and the next week they're in germany playing like you can do a lot with that with like storylines and like um, making people care about the the competitors more um, and kind of hyping up each major individually it's not quite there yet because like i said joinville and dortmund already overlapped but at the beginning of last season the first like six or whatever that they released were all like spread out apart from each other nothing overlapped at all until like the australia tournaments got announced and they overlapped with everything um, and there's still nothing for Australia announced yet. So they always uh, get the short end of the stick, unfortunately. Um, but that could have something to do with maybe doing less tournaments is to try and put more emphasis on each tournament across the globe as they happen um, from the U.S. to Europe and so on and so forth. Not trying to probably specifically not trying to double up anything between uh, Europe and the U.S. But I don't think they've done up to this point as, as far as this season goes. Um, I don't remember everything this season, but I'm pretty sure they didn't double up anything this season for Europe. Yeah, and... I don't think we have any overlap with like EU or anything. Yeah, so if they go that route, there's only so many weekends throughout the year. And also, if they're trying to create more of a spectacle for these turn, like imagine if they went to more region. Imagine if there's 25 regionals this season instead. Like they would be worth so much less. People would care about them less. Like I, I think you want it kind of on both fronts where you want major tournaments for people to attend, but you want people to care about the major tournaments as well. So you can't have too many. And you can't have too few that, that um, I mean, theoretically you could have too few, but you want a decent amount throughout the year as well, right? I think, so I think the one thing that they are trying to push though is like, I, I think the, it's really tough. So I think la like uh, probably like what, eight years ago at this point, when they had, like, the fall, like, it was, like, the fall, winter, and then, like, the spring regionals, where it's just, like, a bunch of different ones all in, like, the same weekend. Um, I think you can make the point that, like, those regionals are kind of cool, because, like, everything that happens is, like, contained within that region. So, like, certain players you know will be there, and, like, different stuff does well. So it's more interesting. It's interesting to, like, see how different regions develop. And then now in, like, the current system, it's, like, everyone just flies everywhere. So yeah, it's, it's kind of different for just, like, how you approach that sort of thing. I think the one thing that, and I do want to get your opinion on this as well, um, is that I think they're like they're really strategically trying to schedule regionals around the ICs, and they probably will more as we get more of the schedule. Like this year, it goes like LEIC and then the week after Sacramento. So like I don't usually do the IC into the regs. Do you think that's like a cool feature, like a, a cool thing to be doing? Um, I guess I like it. I, so is that what, is that how the time frame lines up? It's gonna be LEIC and then the week after Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's 
it's good in terms of giving more players the chance to like um and i guess it would always kind of just like line up best with u.s regionals i mean they've done that in the past before i remember like coming back yeah. from australia i think and immediately playing in toronto or something yeah. um it was so last year it was um or uh two years ago with like lugia it was like leic into toronto and then yeah. previously it was like australia into st louis yeah i mean i think it's fine to like have it like right back to back because like there's if you're going to be hitting such a different player base right as long as it's not like uh any well it would never be NAC. if it's not like your uh euic into european regional but if it's like hits a different yeah. region then it kind of makes sense like if we're going laic into uh a regional in like sacramento then it makes sense right because there's gonna be a ton of american players that are not going to be at laic and now they get to play the new cards uh and enjoy that experience as well so sure uh, and then like even the week after is uh, i'm looking at it right now the week after is germany right so it's just like oh sure yeah. um so they are just like and maybe that is going to be a focus with scheduling. I'm trying to think about like if it wasn't as much last year, but maybe that's going to be a focus with scheduling. It's just to literally have it. And then actually the week after is a special event in Latin America. So it's like, I see major in region, major in a specific region, major in a specific region, major in a specific region. So like everyone's going to interact with the new set as soon as possible, basically as besides like, you know, there's like that week uh, of the IC, but after that, everyone starts to get to play with the new cards at majors. Sure. I, I think it they're, they're probably gonna be able to do it with any of the most because I think like last year yeah. it, it went LEIC and then the week after was both Gdansk and I think it was Brisbane in Australia and so it's probably just easier to do that in NA to go like IC NA reg since we have like more locations and stuff yeah so I think that might be a bigger thing that we keep we keep seeing for the ICs I'm actually curious how, do you uh, do either of you know how many regionals we had before the end of the year last year uh, like in the first and. Like 23? 22, 23. Yeah. Uh, let me look it up. I'm wondering, like, if, like, because I'm, I'm trying to think, like, I mean, the rumors have been that we're going to have, like, eight or nine majors, right? Or regionals. We're going to have, like, nine. Nine, yeah. So I'm trying to think if, like, this lines up with having less of this, like, end of the year section. If that lines up for, like, nine is probably going to be correct. Um, it feels like, I mean, most of the other rumors were true. So I feel like it's probably true. Um, Are you talking like Lugia year or like this past year? This past year, so end of 2023. Okay. There's five. There's five. Pittsburgh, Peoria, Sacramento, Toronto, San Antonio. So that would line up a little bit, right? We're cutting out two there and then cut out another, just another one in the in next year at some point. That line up to like have a roughly nine. Um, yeah, I think obviously we don't want two, like it's going back to the guys, we don't want too few regionals, but like. Yeah, I mean, around 10 is probably where we're going to sit moving forward. Um, yeah, n 9 and Puerto Rico special event. Especially if they're trying to make a bigger deal out of... Because, like, obviously, like, they only really streamed the U.S. and Canada regionals for a while, so, like, those got more of a spotlight on them. But now that they're doing Europe, and hopefully they eventually make their way down to Latin America to, do, to, do, to stream those consistently as well, then, it, like, you can put, like, more of a spotlight on everyone. Because you can't have, yeah, once again, you can't have too many events throughout the year. Like, if you're trying to give them up and not put them on the same weekend yeah this is like not super related but just because grant mentioned puerto rico this is like me playing devil's advocate i think the the spe stocks go like way up this year oh yeah like i think yeah. in fourth quarter there's gonna be a lot of people who are at like 100 like practicing spanish on duolingo because like they just need a good finish <laughs> Yeah, I think that's just going to be part of like the the growing pains of the new system because I think they are trying to. Because yeah. Pablo brought up some really good points when I did a space like right after the changes was like they're in actual venues, not just like card shops. The dates yeah. are being put out like with the other dates of like major tournaments around in the other regions. They're not going to be as big as U.S. and Canada regionals or European regionals, but you know even if they start at like three hundred people this year, then five hundred players next year, like. Yeah, it's going to be easier to get championship points if you go to those than some actual regionals in US and Canada, but like it's not that big of a deal, I think, one way or the other. But yeah, people are trying to get that edge going to the special events. We'll definitely get you there. You can't win any money, though. So it's a trade off. Yeah. They're okay. I think they are like really trying to buff them up because, like you said, like it's not like it used to be that stuff got announced in May and the events were in yeah. like late May. And like there, there's actually a whole bunch of stuff you can read on this. People have talked about SPEs forever. Like you can read a bunch of articles about like they're too small and should we region lock and all that. But there's eventually a point where, like, the size kind of levels out and the amount of, like, like quote, good players or whatever kind of balances it. Um, I, I didn't actually know this when I first read it. One of my friends told me, like, you, you can get your invite from winning a Latam special event now, yep. which I think is probably a net good thing. It gives, like, more opportunities down there. Mm. 
Yeah, and that's like another indication that they're trying to like grow them as big as possible. And there was a ton of growth in the Latin American region last season. They just couldn't yeah. really show it because their caps uh, they had their they hit their caps pretty early, and they only had like uh, like at least in Brazil they only had three majors, I think. And then the rest of the special events outside of that were like pretty small and capped pretty fast as well. Um, that sounds right. Cause it was like Curitiba, Sao Paulo, and then maybe had the four. Third. There was a third one for sure because Dalton got second and like yeah. Yeah, so they didn't have like a ton of like regionals and then like the special events i think the biggest special event was like 150 players or something yeah. uh i remember fabrizio got second at that one it was towards the end of the season as well but i think like all those capped so like there was only 150 oh, okay. people there but it capped at like 150 people i can't imagine those events didn't cap like i'm pretty sure puerto rico capped um yes. and there was only what like 70 players or something i don't know i don't know if it did i think it was 180 but i don't think it was really big because i think they had like top 64 points oh did they it was bigger than yeah. i expected it I, can Puerto, I think Puerto Rico is like different though, because I'm I'm pr I could be super wrong in this, but I'm pretty sure it's like kind of expensive to go to Puerto Rico from like Brazil and Peru and stuff. And Puerto Rico gets way more like American influence. So I feel like oh, that was one eighty different yeah. than like the other one, like the yeah. other Latin SBEs. Yeah, you'd probably have to fly to the U.S. to get to get back there. I don't think there's direct stuff from probably from Brazil. Yeah, I'm curious then if it actually captured. It was 180. Bogota was 130. So they are getting bigger, and if they are, but if they're capping out those numbers, who knows how many people are being left out? Yeah, but I guess I, we don't. I don't know for sure if they're capping. Someone in chat just said all Brazilian events capped last season. Um, okay. Sao Paulo regional was the biggest regional yet, and that was a thousand. Yeah, that was a thousand one hundred and forty-two. There's yeah, a really there's a big demand for like everything there. So so like I've never lived somewhere where cups cap and you have to like pre-reg and stuff. One of the really good Latin players, Joao, told me like. And like Sao Paulo and stuff, you have like their stuff caps like instantly, and so I'm sure it's probably a similar effect to that for like the regionals and stuff. Yeah, I know like their early regionals capped, um, like the first one did. So uh, definitely a lot of room for growth there. We'll see if uh, we will see what it looks like though, what the what the special events look like. But yeah, I just don't think it's I like, guess like another. I hate it because like this is like. <laughs> Another reason for the special event pl complainers to complain about special events. So I have to, we have to hear them for at least one more season. So I'm hoping this year special these special events in Latin America hit like 300 players, and then next year they get up to like 500 players. So then there's nothing for the special event complainers to complain about at some point. Like I just want the numbers to be as big as possible. So there's nothing for the special event complainers to complain about because I really don't think it's that big of a deal overall. Still, still not. Um, it's like it's like eventually gonna level out too and and the thing is i so i think this used to be a way bigger deal pre-covid and a notable example if you, if you care about the history of special events and american influence is guatemala <laughs> like right like so guatemala like right before covid this is the same weekend as expanded collinsville there's like 18 players and if someone goes on limitless and looks up the top four top eight it is literally all Americans. There are no Guatemalan players in top eight of the Guatemalan SPE. And that's that's when we could be like, okay, maybe this is not how it should be. But now it's like you look at them and they're like 100 players or 200 players. And like, and, and, and it, to the point of like, it doesn't really matter. Like the, uh, so last year, like the person who won Bogota was Andrew Hedrick, who was probably going to be fine either way. And then I think for Puerto Rico last year, it was like John won, Kuz got second. And it's like, for those kind of people, is that really going to matter? Like, I think we're getting to the point where like, that you know people going in and taking the points or whatever that argument's kind of done like events are getting to a size where i think the size argument's kind of done too M maybe you see more people go down to SPEs this year but they're probably like they shouldn't have a big impact overall if you like need the top four in SPE to get your invite or whatever like maybe it's just like not for you maybe it's not that big of a deal yeah i think it'll like yeah there might still be some SPE pains this season but couple seasons in, there'll be like nothing to like worry about with that stuff anymore it's like we are slowly like it's slowly like panning out season after season and yeah like you are right yeah. the sometimes when we see like the the people who are going to the sbs anyways are like the players who are like in top 16 playing for top 16 it's not like they're playing for their invite um i guess it, yeah. it's just like kind of like the top 16 racers who like the try the try hard sweaties it. yeah who like complain about other try hard sweaties going to a special events and at that point it's just like bro just go win a regional bro like come on you can't like <laughs> you can't sit here and be like i'm in top 16 in north america but like i'm not gonna tr like i i'm not putting it on myself to win the next regional to to make sure i stay in top 16 or something like that like yeah at that point I you're think just also, oh sorry go ahead no no no, go ahead okay so this is something that i actually don't know this is another like personal opinion one so i i think this year i talked to drake about this a little bit and he said it's kind of it i think the mindset even of people in 16 has changed 
because like especially going into this year like there's no day two buff anymore like you just get the round one and especially in america since hawaii is like a state the ta is in region and stuff i think we're kind of shifting to that point where like i don't know it personally but it seems like 16 is like people who just go to a lot of events and want to do well it's not people who are like okay i'm going to get 16 i'm going to do x y and z yeah like it's, mm -hmm. i mean they get a when they announced the world's format getting that one round one by definitely got a buff the, a bigger buff than people thought it was going to have because there's less rounds mm -hmm. overall but yeah it's not it definitely has gotten to that point and we don't even know if there is going to be any tiered buys next season tier one or tier two buys yeah they have or tier one tier two invites um i assume there will be something though even if there's not a buy involved yeah i don't know with 125 or with the cap being so small I guess it'll end up being what? Did, did somebody do the numbers? What if they give like a thousand dollars to everyone who gets their world's invite? Wait, that'd be T for a stipend. <laughs> I mean, sure, I guess. Yeah. They'll yeah. probably just keep it like as is. Just yeah. had it as a system for so long. Yeah, as I long think as the thing, yeah. They're Sorry, still doing the they're still doing the IC stuff, so I feel like they're still gonna do something for worlds. Yeah. I think the other thing too is Pokemon strikes like a hard balance and like they, they don't want people to just, like, get invite and chill, which I guess you can't really do as much this year, but they also want to reward people who are, like, doing really well. So, like, I feel like there's no way that stuff ever goes away. Yeah, and I don't think it should. I, I've always, like, talked about it. I want to expand as much as possible. And they expanded on a little bit this season for the travel awards and stipends. They've now added priority reg for 17th to 32nd in regions. So that's, that's something. Huge. Um, It's, like, the, the littlest... It's, like, basically the smallest they could do. They... But they did do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the I same thing with the auto invites. They added the auto invites to top four of ICs now. So it's like the the littlest amount of more auto invites they could do, besides maybe just giving it to a finalists of region finalists of regionals. Would it be weird for that to match ICs? Um. So yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah they give you a little bit and then they take it away by having <laughs> EU IC in London again. <laughs> That's fine. London's not even like. Come on. London's fine. Like, it makes sense for like that Europe's is probably huge yeah but it's very accessible yeah london has the biggest uh venue by far it looks like yeah that's the thing is like there's there's nowhere in europe that could support euic better than like excel at this point which is why it's always going to be there yeah that's truly unfortunate i think i've come to terms with that i think like maybe moving forward for me i'm going to try and like spend an extra week in europe ahead of time to go somewhere else before I make my way over to London. It's going to yeah. have to be my, oh, my European adventures or something like that. Um, well, what is what is around London? Oh, it's in February. We don't uh, know any. There's no there's no tournaments announced. I was yeah, like, what other yeah. tournaments around? Because there's like a European event two weeks after London or something. Hey, I might just stay in Europe. I sure. yeah, heard, heard the weather's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Hayes, you got anything else? Um, I think my only gripe with London is the food. I usually don't eat a lot when I'm there, but <laughs> all the system stuff, okay, I think so is all good. Food and weather, okay. I think the weather's like fine. I'm okay with the weather too. Much. I like oh, the they, gloomy. Yeah. I like the gloomy vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <but laughs> yeah, it's great. Not everything has to be like <laughs> sunny out, especially in February. Why not? <laughs> they they get to like, pick where all these places are. They get to pick the time and place. You pick the best like places. Eight, if it is like 80 degrees in February in London, we have bigger problems than like where the venue is. Or yeah. like where that is. So, um, I think that's everything. I think everyone else made good points. I made the best points. So thanks for having me on. Of course, have a good one, Hayes. <laughs> yes, you too. All right, we got James here still. I'm gonna get James in here. See what he's see what he wants to yap about. An OG yapper. <laughs> Yo. There he Yo. is. What's up, James? <laughs> What's up, guys? Hey. All right, hit All us right. with it. So the the main thing I want to say is with uh <clears throat> with Lord's invite. First thing, Hayes is like I just want to say that Grant Hayes is like the the example of the person who would be like one most rewarded by the new system with invite and chilling because he got second at a regionals and top thirty two at an IC. Like that guy <laughs> could have gone to those two events alone and almost got his invite. Um, so that's pretty interesting. But yeah, I just wanted to say um, I think like it, it with the one, top one twenty five. Another point to it is like. We have Japan as well, and if and Japan's invite is like ten times harder than anything we've ever had. So the top one twenty five like definitely converges more closely to like what they have, um, which is like a lot less invites, way harder. Like as far as I know, like Daichi was like one round away from missing worlds this year, which is just like yeah. insane to me. Um, so yeah, that's the main thing I wanted to come on and talk about is like how um, like 
Oh, I think that it was definitely maybe like I think the best argument for it is a, a bit too much too fast. But if we're going to converge to like Japan and they're not like willing to give more invites to Japan, like to, to some extent, like it's almost fair to like get cut down to some extent. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, Japan's so cutthroat too. It's it's tough when you see that like you know they have like three thousand people at events and um, you know so few get get worlds uh and it's when it's so important there we saw it last year at worlds we see it in, you know with the uh with the elite four and how they're just paraded around as celebrities you know and it's, it, you know it's really crazy oh yeah yeah that's crazy yeah but yeah that in like china as well like if the numbers i've heard from china are true as well like if i don't know i actually wish i was more informed if they're getting like five thousand people events they've got like a hundred people at worlds i mean like pretty crazy for them over there is it must be like insane for them over there as well. So <clears throat> I kind of, it's kind of something I wish I knew more on, but um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it, to, at some point, like we need to converge to Japan. It's uh, like, I don't know. Well, I agree. Well, I definitely agree that we, we eventually want to be on the same system, like across the board, us and all the, all the countries in Asia that are on the TPC system, we eventually want to be, closer in terms of what is happening at our tournaments um, and hopefully it doesn't become us playing best of one that's my like i'm just hoping <laughs> that's not well, what Japan's happens going to best of three they're going to best of three before we're going to best of one hopefully yeah yeah <clears throat> that's what i'm for um but uh, but that is a good point that is a good point as well for sure that you know if we compare it to just like what other regions have to do japan <clears throat> I don't quite know the full system in China, but I know Japan's way harder. Even all the other countries uh, in Asia as well, like they have to, yeah. their invites are just so much harder than ours and always have been. Um, so the, the question would be like, should they conform to ours or should we conform yeah. to them? I think probably we need to at least make our way a little bit towards them, but it doesn't mean they couldn't make it their way a little bit towards us as well. But I, I think yeah. I do agree with that, but it, it might be harder like Japan TPC is TPC, right? They're the big dog. So if they're just kind of uh, set uh, steadfast in their ways and don't really want to change, then, um, we, you know, I think us going a little bit towards them is like a reasonable reason. Because like, I don't think it's unreasonable for Worlds to be harder. So it's like, if that's like another reason to make Worlds harder, it doesn't, it's, it's okay to like kind of add that on top of the, on top of the pile when we're like, when they're making the choices here. I'd like to see us get closer to TPC, you know, uh, expanded regionals. Huh? Let us play in their let us play in their tournaments. That let us would play be in their one. tournaments. Yeah. yeah, let us play in their tournaments. Be great. I'm trying to go over to Japan and play in a tournament for sure. That'd be super sick. One um, day we'll get all the same system, but yeah, I think <clears throat> I think they definitely could have converged to us and like put maybe make give them, you know given them some more invites or I don't know, but their system is so weird that like they're getting invites from like essentially league cups that it's like uh, I don't even yeah. know what they can, but it, yeah, like I think it, like they could have come towards us, but then at that point like. Worlds is like 2,000 players, um, and it's like an IC. And then, <clears throat> I don't know, it's just different. It'd just be like diff completely different. And then, like, I don't even know if they can house 2,000 players. And clearly, like, from Pokemon's perspective, I mean, with this, like, also, like, I mean, we'll see in Hawaii if it's actually crammed or not. I think that's definitely something we have to, sit we have to like, wait and see as well. Because if Hawaii is, like, super crammed, then we can also see, like, their justification for it. Um, I think there's, like, like quite a few reasons that like they could have done this that like we haven't really like fully considered logistically yet um because yeah i mean if, if we already know they're not selling many spectator badges and yeah if hawaii is like super kind of be rough but yeah i don't definitely. know i guess like one more thing to bring up with that uh which is kind of unfortunate for kato but now if you get top four in ic or you win a regional and you're from asia you get your world's invite um Someone put that out on Twitter. They asked the question to support, put a support ticket in. And then the response was a first no, but then they corrected their response and said, yes. So now if any players from Japan or China or anywhere over there come over and they get top four in ICE or they win a special event or a regional, they get their world's invite through like our system. Um, was it not that way last year? No, I believe. No, really? it was. Yeah, I think it was changed this going into ah. this year yeah that's the way that that's the way the response from the support ticket made it sound that it was a change going into the season um uh i thought kato i thought the perspective was that kato was losing his invite by the by the top four loss but i guess not oh really was that maybe maybe it was the same way my understanding from reading that support ticket response it made it they made it sound like this season it, it, it was no a change idea, going into the season 
Um, I think people were just saying that about Kato because he got like 900 championship points and then doesn't have his invite. Yeah, it's um, crazy. Which is, yeah, I, I mean, even if we can't play in their tournaments, I think it'd be fine to let them like accrue, uh, accrue an invite in our system. I would be fine with that personally. Absolutely. As well, I sent that tweet. You can pull it up. Okay. Um, while you're doing that, just for, for reference here for everybody on the size of the Hawaii Honolulu uh, Convention Center, the uh, on the on the events calendar, the Pokemon World Championships is ten thousand in attendance. Uh, four days later, the Made in Hawaii Festival sixty thousand. Oh, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think, think I don't think convention right, space yeah. is an issue. I think we have problems there at all. Yeah. All right. Which, on top of that, think of people who are going to stay. You know, you know, your world trip is usually more than just the the playing days, right? So you're going to have overlap with another sixty thousand person event, and then also uh, six days later, a fifty thousand person event. So uh, the, the islands are going to be uh, are going to be popping. Well, they definitely have the space. Have... Yeah. yeah, no space problems. I don't know, because like objectively, it does seem like a pretty like weird change overall for Pokemon to make. So like finding ways to justify it, I think is like interesting because. It, it seems weird to think that Pokemon really benefits much from removing their invites. Like they're probably definitely going to lose like some amount of money, but I feel like the extra seats, like 150 or what would it be like 300 extra seats is like a huge difference. Um, so I don't know. Trying to think about it from that perspective, but if they make up that difference in spectator passes, you know, all, all the money's Ooh. really, really made at the Pokemon center at that point. Right. So yeah. who's who's going to be buying more merch? The the competitor saying, "Oh, this is my first Worlds. I, I have to get, you know, some stuff to commemorate it." Or the scalpers that are there to buy it and flip it. You know, buying one of everything. Well, the scalpers obviously, and that's a spectator pass. So, you know, that their Pokemon makes more money with more spectators versus more competitors. True, but I. I mean, does it, is you really losing that many? I guess you probably are. You're losing 100% of the people who play in the event as spectators. Because surely someone playing in the event is, oh, well, yeah, I guess it'd be more space, right? More space than a spectator. So you lose even more spectators. Yeah. More yeah. tables. More tables, yeah, that can't be cut out for spectator stuff. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess, yeah, there, there is like a, there, there probably is like a, maybe even like a two to one, three to one, right? Yeah. Um, like you get three extra spectators per competitor. Yeah. And then plus like cutting the size down, it's not just about the masters, right? You're also thinking about seniors and True. juniors, which have to have, you know, a parent with them or a guardian. So but that's an, it, an body the, that's... I'll just say, have they changed the invite much? Actually, I don't, I don't even know. I should, it's probably be a good thing to just literally pull up right now. Uh, if seniors are actually, have their invites been cut? Because you know, There's 190 than... in, in NA this year and 153 juniors, so and they can cut down to 100 or something, right? Yeah, yeah, it's so... 175. It's not that big. I mean, I guess it's something, and across all regions as well. I mean, if you think about it, Guardian, that's 180 spots. That's the same as cutting Masters 271 to 125, right? Like it's roughly all balances out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if the cuts were proportional, it should be less than a hundred. Yeah, but then you have to add the the guardian. True. Sure, yeah, good point. And I, while we're on this guardian stuff, uh, the the spectator when you put your names for the badges, are they going to be checking IDs at the door? Yeah, you have to like show up with your to get well, it. Not the not at the to door. Get it. There's but, no way at the door they're going to be checking everyone's ID. Oh, today. right. Wait, when you're coming in so, with your badge? Yeah, so who cares? You show up with two people to get the badge, and then you can sell those badges to anyone. Okay, I'm going to get banned from Pokemon for that. Oh, uh, wait, was this their, oh, is <laughs> like, that their idea to stop scalping? I didn't even think about that. Is it that doesn't the, do anything, right? Yeah, uh, it doesn't yeah, seem like it, it does. It does very much. Well, you have to have another person with you, which could, well, no, could be like a badge. Just trip. to pick it up. Yeah, but they're checking the yeah, ID just, when just you pick it up. Sure, you bring the people with the name. But then you can sell you can sell those badges immediately to somebody else. Oh, I see what you're saying. I yeah, see. When yeah. I'm, I'm walking up, they're not going to say, "Oh, you're not as well, Gigi." Well, you know, uh, bad example because they'll know who you are. But like, 
I have somebody else's name on my badge. They're you still not need, be like, that's not you. You still need two people to come up with you. That would just, be a just to pick it up. For me just specifically, to pick it up. that would be a barrier to entry. Finding two people who aren't getting their own spectator pass. Yeah, yeah. Who get my spectator pass. Like, who would, who would I get? Like, I can't off the top uh, of my head, like, think okay. of something. That would be a barrier to entry for me. Okay, for, but, for example, um, you play in day one and you are and you lose. And like, all right, well, I'm not going to go back to the venue. I'll sell my, my badges. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess somebody I mean, shows yeah, up you with could. a different name. It's like, who cares? They're not going to check your ID for it. Yeah, but, well, I don't. I don't think they're solving the problem of selling the passes off with this. No, really. they, yeah. I don't. I don't think they intend to. Really, they just like you know, just like throw a barrier in they the way. They just want to make it like, more we'll difficult. Just, yeah, that's yeah. We'll just classic we'll just, Pokemon. Like, a deterrent. Yeah, we'll make it a little bit more difficult. <laughs> we'll scale it up over years or something. Like I don't know. We'll find a new solution next year. <clears throat> Do they? I like for, from my perspective as well. Like, does it even matter to them that people are really selling spectator passes? Yeah, like, who cares? Who right? cares? Like, it's not. It's not like losing that. Well, I, yeah, I really use my spectator. My yeah, I use my spectator. I go in on day one. I buy everything from the Pokemon Center. I sell my pass to somebody else. They come in and buy everything from the Pokemon Center. <laughs> what a win for them! And what yeah. I get, I get 120 bucks back. Great. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if they really care. I guess maybe they don't like the idea of like people being like, I don't even know, like predatory with it. But I don't even know if it really, really can be in these kind of situations. Like if it's like, can ever be like. Is it ever like that much of a immoral wrongdoing to sell your spectator badge to <laughs> yeah. someone? I don't think so. Yeah, I, just, I don't know how much they care, or even if they do get, if they do care, to be honest. Um, I don't, yeah, because I don't even know if like this this spectator process is because of trying to like limit scalping or not. I don't even know if that actually is why they're doing it. To be honest, I have no idea why they would be doing this, but they are. They are. Yeah. It does seem like. Th- it, I, I, it probably like they don't expect it to do very much. May, this, okay, well, there's probably people pissed about it because like those spectator passes could, in theory, be going to at a low price. Like if Pokemon just sold them themselves, so like maybe there's people getting pissed at the fact that like people are selling spectator passes for under fifty. It's like you know what, we'll just like put some band aid fix over this that really doesn't achieve much and pretend like everything's solved. Um, <clears throat> like to the to the people who are complaining or something. Very PR. Yeah, PR move over there. But oh, I'd, I'd love to sit in those meetings and hear what they're talking about when they come up <laughs> with some of these things. Like <laughs> that would I, I would I would love to too. That'd be very interesting. The PR Pokemon meetings. That'd be so much fun. All right, you got anything else for us, James? No, I'm All right. I'm good. Thanks for coming on as always. No worries. Peace. All right. See ya. All right, I'm gonna read through this tweet real fast so people know we're talking about with the. Uh, Players over in Asia. Uh, players in Asia cannot earn the world's invite from ICR regionals win in or regional win in 2025. Same as 2024. Here's the answer by TPCI support. They were super fast. So Yoko Clover here on Twitter submitted a support ticket asking, you know, if I win a regional or top four and I see, uh, can I get a world's invite if I'm from Asia? And the initial <clears throat> response from TPCI was players in Japan, South Korea, and South Pacific region will be awarded world championships uh, world Championship invitations as per their region's organized play and esports programs. Players from these rating zones are not eligible to earn world invitations through championship points or through automatic invites earned by winning regionals or invitational championships. We thank you for your support and participate in the Play Pokemon events and look forward to seeing you, to seeing all of you at future Pokemon World Championships. And then, not all of us. Uh, <laughs> and then they re clarified I received the revised answer from TBCI support. Players in Asia can earn the world's invite from IC or regional win from 2025 season. Uh, really? It's very, very interesting change. Uh, hello, Yoko. We'd like to apologize if the information provided regarding your inquiry is not correct for the 2025 championship season. Beginning in the 2025 championship season, players in Japan, South Korea, and the Asia Pacific region will have the ability to earn automatic world's invitations from winning regional championships, special event, or top four in an international championship. Uh, additional update. The change is applied to VGC, TCG, and Go. For Unite, information will be updated later. So that's good to hear. So confirmed, basically. Yeah. Um Definitely it's good to so, hear. So classic Pokemon to get it wrong first. Yeah, actually, though. <laughs> um, but they clarified fast. It's something. But yeah, that's cool. That should be how it is. Like, if they, if any player from Japan comes over here and wins one of our regionals, like, them not walking away with their world's invite is, like, stupid, right? Yeah. Even if we're out of their system. They still can't earn championship points, I guess, which I would be fine if they could, but... Um, 
I mean, it, yeah, what does it, what does it matter? Uh, maybe just uh, bumping somebody's invite at this point because of the new bad format. Yeah. For any of the tweets we have here on topics, did you want to hit on any of these takes um, from people about the new system stuff? Not really. I mean, we can. There's there's just so many, right? Yeah. Um, I think every corner of, of the argument's been covered in, in some aspect. Yeah. Uh, you know, it gets exhausting <laughs> going through it all, right? All right, well... Uh, I think we all agree that, you know, too fast, too soon. I think that's the, the consensus. Yeah, I can of, definitely get behind the that. They could, have, they could have done it a little bit slower, for sure. And, you know, it gives us more topics to talk about when, when things are screwed up down the line. And, yep. you know, somebody somebody gets kicked out in the last week. We had, a, you know, hopefully some Twitter drama we can talk about. All right. Well, we did have one more topic to discuss today then which is the topic of the goat in the pokemon tcg because mahone came out with a video was it yesterday the day before yesterday recently um where he did like a little of like a docu video or like um commentary video went around interviewed some people uh and kind of covered the discussion of who is the goat in the pokemon tcg right now because this discussion has been going on for a little while. Is it Jason Klasinski, three-time world champion, or Tord Reklev, the five-time international champion, two-time top eight uh, or finals and top four at Worlds? Um, so I'm curious to start off with, what is because you you never played back when Jason was a player, right? Um, yeah, that uh, the time he he was doing well was during my 19, 20 year gap. Yeah. So what is, with everything you've heard, I'm sure you've probably thought about it maybe a little bit. What is your take? What is your opinion on the GOAT in the Pokemon TCG? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I'm obviously biased because I'm friends with Tord. So I have to lean that way and, and I get to see him and, and play with him and see how his brain works. And it's just insane, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then I'm looking back to the way I look at sports, um, you know, Jordan versus LeBron. And I grew up with Jordan, and now I've also grown up with LeBron, and I'd say Jordan is the GOAT. So it's totally different eras. Everything's different. How do you how do you compare the two? We can't really do anything about that. They're both 99 on skill level if you're playing NBA 2K. Um, <laughs> so I, I know these guys play a lot. They play retro formats. Um, I, I see they have events all the time, and then whenever they get paired up, it's a big deal. Um, but I think I... You know, I think the way you're looking at it now with these bigger events, you have to give more credit to the modern era with 2,000 people and to, to continuously win those major events with the stream being so big, the pressure being on. Um, so I'd, I'd, I'd have to give my nod to Tord. Yeah, I think I, I had come to a conclusion at some point that I gave it to jason just because um i get jason just because he has one worlds the thing that actually made me like now made me kind of uh in the middle on everything and not picking one side over the other is actually uh when i started hearing about and learned more about caitlin clark because uh for anyone who doesn't know who caitlin clark is she's a now wnba but was a uh is, is by a decent amount of people considered like the greatest college female basketball player of all time. And she never yeah. won. She never won the championship. Right. And I was like, and that's what made me stop and think. I was like, okay, like what, what would, why could you give her that title? It's like, well, she only gets to play four years, right? In college. Um, so when you compare the TCG to something like sports, it's like, well, they're, they're just like more limiting factors, right? The, the By far the best team in a sport almost always wins when they are by far the best team. Or it's like easier to tell who the best player is in a sport because like the, the effort and dedication in something like a sport um, where there's less RNG, less random variables and factors uh, allows you to be more consistent, right? Or to like to truly prove your skill to another level, right? Like if we just like took the ceiling in Pokemon and doubled it, then we could maybe easily tell if it's Tord or Jason, right? But we can't do that. So sure. knowing the limiting factors that exist and then looking like at her scenario where people like call her the goat of, of college basketball and uh, she never won. It's like, okay, but people are still very comfortable saying that. It's like, okay, so I, I took that thought process and put it in Pokemon. It's like, um, 
I, and that led me to the conclusion where I think I don't think you have to. I don't think you have to win the championship to be considered the go the world championship. Now I'm not sure if I still give it to Tord because of that, but it leaves me kind of like in the middle. Like obviously, like if in a season, like let's say this upcoming season, you won like 20 regionals and all three ICs, but didn't win worlds, and you did that like three seasons in a row, you're probably the goat. <laughs> like yeah. you're probably the goat. <laughs> but it's an extreme, right? And we haven't seen anything that extreme yet to be like. Is anyone really performing that much better outside of Worlds but can never win the World Championships? Uh, I mean, Tord is like the number one in that case, but winning three time, winning Worlds three times is still like pretty incredible. Both incredible players with incredible feats, uh, but Tord is still playing. And I think you can definitely become the GOAT without winning Worlds. I think I'm pretty set on on that at this point, having the discussion come back up and thinking about it a little bit more. But Tord, I think Tord has to win a little bit more maybe like one more world's top eight would put toward over jason for me personally yeah i was gonna say if he wins worlds that's the debate oh, yeah over. it's over it's over if he wins yeah. world it's definitely over but i think he can do it without winning worlds even the, the even the new limited tiny worlds that we're gonna have yeah <laughs> that one still counts i mean back then worlds were not very big when jason right, was yeah. winning so um yeah worlds is gonna be worlds will be well it'll still be a decent size event we're still gonna have like even with these caps now like we're gonna have like an maybe over a thousand players this year. Um, moving forward, we'll have around like what, 700, 800, but I don't know all the, all the regions like in Asia, uh, all the countries in Asia are like growing and like we're getting China now added to the circuit. So I don't even know. We could, we could still be start, starting to push back up towards like a thousand invites again in a couple of years from now, depending on like how many invites they actually get over the season. Um, we have pretty big worlds, but the worlds are going to scale back again this year, next this upcoming year for sure, compared to where we are, where we're going to be in Hawaii. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely possible for sure. But I don't think Tord has quite pushed it there for me. But I'm still in between. Like I'm still not fully decided. I don't want to give it to either player, really, to be honest. I, what I really want to have happen is Jason comes back and starts playing again. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be super sick. That would just be insanely cool. It'd be like that would literally just be like Jordan making the comeback after his retirement. Um, yeah, they uh, in chat. Scott Aragon 20 said, Goat is greatest of all time, not this era. Jason also won worlds without all the information that is available to players today, which is a good, you know, a good take, right? What the information age is clearly upon us. Um, but I will say that one difference here is that um, the ICs are new formats usually, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the information you really get is just you know, talking head videos, previewing the set and what's good and maybe putting some lists on Twitter it really comes down to, to testing still. Yeah. But that's where like, usually, I mean, maybe you could, maybe that would even give a little bit more towards, uh, give the edge a little bit more towards Jason than even because new formats is generally where the better players thrive a little bit more. Cause they're just better at coming up with the unknown or playing into the unknown. Right. Um, so that's why Tord is, does so well. I think it's one of the reasons that Tord does so well. Like you compare his, like, regional placements to his IC placements and even though ICs are the more impressive tournament like his average at ICs is ridiculous compared to his regionals I think like his other majors which is like um, but that is like another thing with like ICs you're going into a new format whereas like Worlds when Jason was winning Worlds that format was like months in advance everyone knew the format we were going into so everyone was playing on like a more even playing field you, your skill as a player was expressed less because you weren't there wasn't unknown to be discovered but that's one of the things that keeps the best players at the top is discovering the unknown yeah and and to add to that too on on toward side he won peoria uh yeah. last season and that was a new format yep. <laughs> so, yep. a... yeah and that's not like a knock on tour but it's just like better players are able to express them being better in the Pokemon TCG when it is a new format because discovering the new, there's more new stuff to discover. So it's more likely they'll actually find an edge in that unknown. Um, but when you're going into, you know, the 10th broken Lugia format tournament, are you playing the escape rope or are you not in your Lugia deck? That's about it. <laughs> yeah. I um, miss those days. <laughs> I do not miss those days. <laughs> oh, so it's really close. I hope Jason comes back, and that would definitely be able to settle the score over the next, you know, three or four seasons. I don't think it's going to happen, though. It would be my guess is that it won't happen. Although, I did see that he, like, went over to Japan to play in, like, a retro tournament. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. <clears throat> I like to see that kind of stuff. I know Tord got uh, sent over to China to play yeah, in a promotional yeah. event. Like, that stuff's really cool. Yeah, we want. I want more of that, man. I mean, I would, like, personally just love to go to China or Japan or something. Like, Japan specifically, obviously, because, like, that's, like, the next biggest region um where i haven't played a tournament but 
going and playing a tournament in Japan or or even China because you get to go back and play in a different format would be kind of cool to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah, you see some of the cards, and you see you see the like the, they're getting new promos and stuff, like the golden VIP pass. Yeah, yeah. Which imagine if that existed here, that'd be <laughs> so <laughs> dumb. Bling <laughs> even further. All right. Well, we got no other people requesting in to talk. No one's got a take on the goat debate. I don't think. And if anyone is in the either of the streams right now, if you're looking to call in, you have to do it through Twitter. I should have probably shouted this out a little bit more throughout the stream. But if anyone wants to call into the stream, we're doing it through Twitter, um, Twitter spaces. So just go to my Twitter and then you should be able to like join the space there if you want to call in. Um, but is there anything else you want to cover or talk about this week? Not really. I mean, it's it's been pretty much just that, you know, the, the world's talk has been the, the thing. People, um, you know, kind of settling into the new new paradigm that, that is competitive Pokemon for the new season. Um, we'll see where they announce worlds. Uh, one thing that Hayes brought up was, you know, uh, how they pick the venues in advance. Well, we know that, right? Uh, San Francisco's already been leaked for yep. the season after. 2026. So, um, so we know we know these things have been been set out. So I don't know if it's really if you can really put logistically that it's um, that they're putting these numbers as far as event space or whatever. I think that's more what I was saying towards just boost spectator pass numbers and and sell sell the hell out of the Pokemon Center. Yeah, I wonder if anyone's already tried to find out where World. I feel, I feel like someone. Ha- I feel like that's something like Tate would do. Um, Tate Whitesell would go around just calling yeah. venues all over the world, trying to figure out where Worlds for 2025 is. I mean, somebody does know, so oh, yeah, somebody knows. They're, yeah, with... they're they're putting together the 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 video for the Worlds. Um, did, I don't remember. Did they announce it at the beginning or the end? The end, like literally the last thing they do. We'll see okay. you next year in. Oh, they yeah. say the name. Um. Right mm-hmm. after wildfires were burning down islands, it was an unfortunate <laughs> lineup for Pokemon for sure. It's a bad look. <laughs> People were uh, definitely not, definitely mad at mad at Pokemon for picking Hawaii. But I mean, I think they were mad at Pokemon for picking Hawaii. Besides just the wildfires that were going on today, but I don't know anything about any of that, so I don't have an opinion on any of that. Yeah, um, and then also he brought up the fact that that Pokemon's delayed a little bit, two years from from COVID. Makes sense, and I think yeah. a lot of people of speculation would say Spain, but then we know, um, you know, they only have SPs there, so the yeah. world being there would be an issue. I've, that's weird, though. Could they not like talk to the government and like be like, "Look, and we're we're trying to play Pokemon here, the Pokemon World Championships." Like, there's got to be a way you could strike a deal there, right? Like, there's no right. way there's it's, it would be impossible. Um, that wouldn't the, make the, any sense. The tourist activity alone. Uh, you know, is just insane. So yeah, they're just being a, like a, a decent economy boost, right? It's not Taylor yeah. Swift levels, but close. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. We think we're pushing Taylor Swift numbers. Taylor Swift numbers of economy boost at Pokemon World Championships. I, I think so. Yeah, I think we're we're just <laughs> one we're one step below Taylor Swift. We're almost there. <laughs> almost there. All right. Well, I think I'm 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 good. I don't got anything else to yeah. go over. Awesome. Set it out. We, uh, we might have a show next week. We'll see what kind of drama pops, pops up between now and then. If not, we'll probably be back in two weeks. Thanks for everyone for tuning in.